How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video we are working on the F-350 and taking a look at what was smoking with on the rear axle. Now my fuel mileage has gone way down and uh, felt like something was dragging. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe it's the differential was low on fluid, checked that, everything was fine. Then I went on a drive and I got back and it smelled like something was cooking a bit, came back and we had a bit of a uh, smoke coming from the rear tire area. Now my first thought was um, the wheel bearings. I said it's 250,000 miles on this. I don't know if wheel bearings ever been changed. Um, I know the front ones were bad and I had to change those out. So that's my first thought. Um, second thought is the brakes. Now on the other side, the there is no parking brake. It's disconnected. I don't know if there's anything inside it or not, but um, I know it's completely disconnected. There's no backing plate. Uh, so maybe on this side, because of that, the parking brake is messed up and that's rubbing. Maybe it's the calipers or maybe like I said, it's the bearing. So what we're gonna do is go ahead. I already got the wheel off, got it on jack stands. Go ahead, go ahead, pull the brake caliper off, pull the uh, rotor off, pull the axle out, take a look, get, tear everything down, put new, uh, and see what everything looks like, put new bearings in, I got those already, and uh, replace the calipers, and we'll see how it goes. All right, I felt it just finally pop off of there. It should, there we go. Should just slide right off of there. Now, looks like I have some remnants of a parking brake on this side. Uh, not much of anything there. So that should be this right here. Should be the backing plate that's completely rusted away so at some point somebody made the decision instead of fixing it just to rip as much of it off as they could and call it a day so that's a project for another time something they probably should do this thing probably be good to have emergency brakes and parking brake on a something this big and heavy But something we'll we'll tackle another day. So now we have these eight, I believe they're 18 millimeter. Take those off. Just pop out. Might need a little. Encouragement to get started. And it's going to leak, so I had my bucket ready to stick under there, but forgot to stick it under there. So yeah, it's going to leak. It's going to have fluid from your differential on it. Let's pull this out. Now there's this nut in here, and you need a specialized tool for it. It's got four prongs. I'll put a link down in the description to, to, to one of these or you can just go to your uh, local store, tell them what you need and they should be able to help you out. But I mean, this is spinning pretty good. It's got a little bit of noise in it, but not bad. I don't think this bearing, there's anything wrong with this bearing. Now that we're in here, but well, we already planned to take it off, so and I got new ones. So I said, I don't know how old these are. And it's got 280 or 250,000 miles, so better safe than sorry. Now, this on the passenger side is regular thread, so just take it off like normal. On the driver's side, it is reverse thread, so you got to go the opposite direction. 
the, the bolt, like, it's two parts. There's actually ridges inside and then on the outside. So when you tighten it down, it goes up against those ridges and kind of locks them into place. That front bearing should just slide out. And the whole thing should slide off. It might need a little uh, encouragement. So there's that front bearing. This actually looks Looks pretty good. There's some scoring along the inside. Makes me think that it was seized up a little bit at one point because surprised that they're scoring on the inside of that bearing. But I mean, it's, it's tight. It's not anything super apparently wrong with it. That could be a part of that could be part of our problem here. So this rear seal should have just slid off and came here. It actually just this whole real seal just came apart. We got a spring in here. Yeah, so. That's going to be fun getting that seal off of there now. And so half of the seal is still uh, on there and the other half is still in there. So we're going to have to get that out, get our rear bearing out. It's the bearing itself, does it? I don't know what this spring is. But yeah, we definitely need to replace this rear seal, get it out from in there, and uh, I don't even think I have a seal remover tool, which would be perfect to get that out of there. But uh, yeah, I'll figure that out and get this all pulled together, and then we will uh, pack the new bearings, put it all back together, and see uh, see if that see if the bearings were wrong or it, it's obviously it's not the uh the drum brakes since the drum brakes do not exist i know they didn't exist on the other side apparently if it's same situation on this side and those calipers are pretty old when i replace those uh this side doesn't look too bad um but we'll see so we got our bearings in from torque king uh we've got the Hub off. Then we got the seal here. Oil slinger, and then the bearing. We got the bearing. We got the race. Um, did not come with the oil slinger, so good thing. Need to save that from the original. The set in there. Other than that, we are good to go. We got everything we need. All right, so we got our new bearing. Before we put anything in, I'm gonna make sure this is all cleaned up. Make sure there's... No debris in there. Make sure that race is in good in in the correct spot and there's nothing piled up in here okay i'm going to get a brush brush this back end off because we want to make sure our, there's nothing in there and that our seal fits in there perfectly but in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and pack this bearing and just some high temp bearing grease 
put some gloves on. Doo -doo. Putting on the gloves, putting on the gloves. This is how we put on the gloves. I got a grease. Just gonna pack it in and put a clump on my palms. Work it in. And yes, this stuff gets everywhere. At least whenever I do it, it does. Maybe you've got better technique than I do. But you really want to just make sure it's packed in there where it's coming through. You see, it's not, not quite packed in there tight yet. Now these bearings do get lubed uh, from your differential fluid. And uh, so it should stay lubed as long as your differential is good, but you still need to pre-lube it uh, and pack it to get it started. All right, so bearings in, sitting in there, grease everywhere, all over. I think I got it on the camera too. But, um, yeah, let me finish making sure this is cleaned up this ledge and then we'll put the uh, the seal in. So now got the lip cleaned up, got everything cleaned up. There's a little extra grease in there. You have to make sure put your put the uh, oil slinging slinger back on there. And then we could put our seal in. It should just pop in, but I don't want to bang on that. So what I'm going to do is use the old seal, set that on top of there, and just kind of give this a nice, now we should be nice and tight all the way around. All right, so then next we did, got it flipped over. Got to do the front side bearing. And same thing. Uh, I just had a rag in there to keep anything from draining out or getting in there. Got this all cleaned up. And it's time to put the hub on. So it should just slide right on like so that forward bushing there or bearing Just push that back in and here's where we got that specialty nut thing going I got 60 foot pounds and feel it. That nut, that clicking is the, the nut itself. It's got little ridges in it. All right, so there's 60 foot pounds. Now that hub's really tight what you're supposed to do at this point those clickings that the uh, this bolt itself does you want to go back seven clicks so it's once you, you want to go slower than that like that and i shouldn't be able to just come in and finger loosen this like I was able to when I was taking this off. This thing was backed off so far. Uh, 
that I could I just was able to uh, use a screwdriver put it in one of these little lips and kind of just push it and, and wheel it back out so now we are nice and greased up we got the new bearings in there it is time to put the hub back in now if I was a smart person which nobody is accusing me of I would go ahead and take care of the parking brakes while I was back here that's another project for another day what I am going to do though is change these brake calipers these are wearing extremely uneven uh, if you see the difference between this outside brake pad and the inside one this one's almost a full brake pad that's worn down to almost absolutely nothing and I'm pretty sure that is a result of the caliper not backing up completely so once you squeeze it it's not backing up completely it does end up getting some relief on this side but this side is staying pressed up against the uh, the rotor and just rubbing down and wearing down on the the inside pad so I'm going to go ahead um, I got some new calipers I'm going to go put those on and then I'm also going to bleed everything I got distracted there sorry I'm go ahead and put the axle back in which is super simple just put slide it in get it lined up put the bolts back in now let's do that Now, in that Torque King kit, there was also another um, O-ring in there to replace this. So I got that replaced. I put just a little bit of the grease on there so that should slide into place. All right, so got that lined up. Just got to put their bolts in. And so these eight nuts or bolts, for these eight bolts, uh, I'm supposed to put them in and 60 to 80 foot-pounds is the torque on them. So get them all started. And I'm just doing it like I do a lug nut pattern where do a star pattern just so it doesn't set anything off kilter too far. But yeah, just gonna go through, snug these down, and then get started on this brake caliper. Alright, so I got the rotor back on, got the new caliper, got the brakes, brake pads in, and just going to reuse the original hardware. Now, when I got the new calipers, I got the new brackets, everything. Got the brake pads in. Everything should just kind of fall into place. And once you get the first bolt started, then. Everything becomes much easier. That's a 22 millimeter bolt just right back here on the back. I'm just gonna snug that up for now. Okay, so we got the caliper on, it's in place. It's just snug right now. We got, it's actually movable. Now, what we need to do Let's connect, disconnect. Let's 
I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Let me move you over here. Bottom one here. We got new banjo bolt, two new crush washers, and it is a 14 millimeter. Which on our old one, it should be the same. I just want to disconnect that banjo bolt. Of course it's not. Seems like it's a little bit bigger on the, on the stock one. Might be a 15. Let me grab. All right, so brake fluid is going to flow out of there. So I got this bucket. I'm going to stick underneath. Also something that would have been helpful is before taking this caliper off, if I would have broke this bolt free, um, when I originally took the caliper off, I wasn't thinking I was going to replace it, so I didn't bother doing that. But now I'm stuck trying to get this bolt loosened with and hold this at the same time and not st stress out the brake line in the process some brake fluid running so we can go ahead and take this off of there <laughs> take a new washer Put through there a new bolt, crush washer on top, crush washer on bottom, and just start tightening that down. You want to make sure you have your wrenches standing by when you get to this point because it's going to flow. All right. Now we got that snugged up. Yeah, so this old caliper, it's, I, it is completely seized up. There's no, no play in it whatsoever. Um, even trying to get these to compress. It is pretty well stuck. So that is going to help us tremendously between these bearings and these calipers. I think we've found our culprit but um yeah let me look up the torque to the banjo bolt and to the caliber bolts bleed that all right so i think it's safe to say that brake fluid was a little overdue it's uh you know it's dot three so it should be uh almost clear maybe a little bit bronzed uh, not black so <laughs> yeah it, it was definitely time for good flushing as wheels clean up nice I'm a huge fan of these uh, I love the clear coat over the polished aluminum anybody that's running just straight aluminum wheels and polishing them and taking care of them uh, kudos to you because I have a hard enough time keeping these clean I can only imagine how horrible they would look if uh, they required regular polishing and everything. But yeah, these turned out great. These I love. Hopefully now that we got the uh, brakes bled, new calipers on there, new bearings in there, everything should be good to go. Um, I'm going to go drive around, see how things go. Hopefully uh, no more smoking come from the rear end. And... Uh, 
we can call it good. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button and let me know. Um, and if you would like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I do upload a video. And I will see you next time.